Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Romana and you are watching Rumi Talks. Uh, it has been a very long time since I last posted on here. I think the last time I posted was during Ramadan 2020, so it's been quite a while and I'm, I'm aware that I'm kind of behind with the posting schedule. But inshallah, my aim is to now stay regular with the uploads, try to upload as much as possible inshallah uh, and upload those things that you guys are suggesting. Um, I will be going through emails, I will be going through messages, comments and I will be trying my best to reply to everything that has been going off on over these last couple of months. Inshallah now the intention is to remain consistent on here so be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment, uh, email at roomytalks at outlook.com if you have anything that you would like to speak to me about, add me on my social media platforms at romana23 on Facebook, on Instagram and on Snapchat and in Rahim. so inshallah in today's video we will be speaking about the fiqh of ghusl. Now, alhamdulillah I've been checking the uh, comments I've seen that loads of people have been asking what is the correct method in performing ghusl um, and what are the fard of ghusl, what are the sunnahs of ghusl, what are the mustahab acts of ghusl so inshallah today I am going to be going through all of that with you um, and if you still have questions after watching the um, entire video today leave them down below and inshallah I will answer them for you so firstly inshallah we will go towards the Quran and we will see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran with regards to the major bath Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran in Surah An-Nisa verse number 43 Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu la taqrabu salata wa antum sukara Hatta ta'lamu ma taquluna wa la junuba Illa abiri sabilin hatta taghtasilu Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Nisa verse number 43 O oh you who believe do not approach prayer whilst you are in the state of being intoxicated until you know what you are saying. And not approach prayer whilst you are in the state of major impurity until you have washed your entire body. The word here that we will look at is where Allah says Hatta silu." This part that Allah mentions here, this is referring to the ghusl which is the major bath. So from here we take that when we are in the state of major impurity we will not be able to perform the acts of worship such as Salah and such as Tawaf of the Kaaba. You know, we will not be able to touch the Holy Quran until we have purified ourselves from this major impurity. So now we will look at what things obligate Ghusl. Ghusl becomes Fard uh, once a woman has completed her menstrual cycle, her postnatal bleeding, after sexual intercourse. There are many uh, scenarios that we have which will uh, make ghusl fard upon a person. And inshallah, I will put them on the board for you now. Uh, on, sorry, I will put them on the screen for you now so you can read through them. You can screenshot and you can take keep with you inshallah and read through them and know what the scenarios are when ghusl becomes fard. If you still are unsure after reading these points, then please comment down below and inshallah I will respond to you. Now, there is a lot of confusion when it comes to when does the ghusl become obligatory and when is it not obligatory. So I'm going to put on the screen for you now the scenarios where ghusl is not obligatory. And again, you can screenshot this, you can read through this and if you are still unsure about any of this, you can uh, comment down below and inshallah I will answer that for you. So now inshallah we will move on to the further elements of uh, ghusl. These are the obligatory elements of the major bath. They are three in total. Number one is to wash the entire body once. This is from the, the head all the way down to your toes. Every single part of your entire body must be washed must be wet with water, even if there is a small amount um, of um, skin that is left dry, your ghusl will not be completed. It is absolutely vital that you take utmost care when washing your entire body to make sure every piece of hair on your body is wet, every part of your body is pure and cleaned. That is the first fard element of ghusl. The second fard element of ghusl is to rinse your mouth. 
Now this is to gargle your mouth all the way down to the deepest part of your throat if you are not fasting. If you are fasting then you must try to avoid that just in case water will enter into your body which will be swallowed and then taken into your stomach which will invalidate the fast. So if you are not fasting you must gargle your mouth to the deepest part uh, possible. And the third element of your ghusl is to rinse your nose and it's the same thing here is to go to the depth of your nose when rinsing only if you are not fasting. If you are fasting then you must avoid that. A person must also be very thorough when they are washing their private organs to make sure that they are washed and there's no type of najasa that is left over. Najasa is impurity. If there's any type of impurity that is left over in these areas, you must do your utmost best to remove that and to be able to conclude whether you have done your utmost in your washing and your cleaning, you must um, do it to uh, the point where there's no foul smell coming from your body anymore. And inshallah, we will move on to the sunnah elements of ghusl. The sunnah elements of ghusl are as follows. I will put them on the screen for you now, inshallah, so you can follow with me. Number one is to begin with uttering in the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most compassionate, which is the tasmiyyah, bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Number two is the intention. To make an intention before beginning your ghusl is a sunnah element of ghusl. Number three, to wash the hands to the wrists. Number four, to wash away any impurity that is isolated on the body. Number five, to wash the sexual organs. Number six, to perform ablution, such as the ablution once one makes for prayer. Number six, to delay the washing of the feet if the area that you are washing yourself in um, water gathers at your feet and it rises you must delay the washing of your feet all the way till the end to pour water on the entire body three times or one may submerge himself in running water or anything else of similar legal status such as a large quantity of water to begin the process by pouring water over the head followed by the right shoulder and then the left shoulder number 10 to rub the body whilst you are washing it and number 11 to wash successively without pausing in between the actions so these are all the sunnah elements of ghusl they are on the screen for you to screenshot and and keep inshallah after reading through them if you are still confused please do comment down below and inshallah i will uh, answer those for you now that we have gone through the fourth elements of ghusl and we have also gone through the sunnah elements of ghusl we know the difference uh, with regards to these actions and when they are being performed whilst we are doing ghusl now we're going to move on inshallah on to the method of ghusl the method of ghusl is quite simple and quite straightforward and i feel like this is the best way uh, in which a person should perform their ghusl uh, to make sure that they're incorporating everything every act into their um, washing of their body and performing the major bath so the method of ghusl is as follows number one the per you must begin with bismillahir rahmanir rahim after you have said bismillahir rahmanir rahim you must remember if you are in the bathroom you are not allowed to say this out loud you must say it in your mind and in your heart then you must make an intention of what you are about to do so you will make an intention for example i am uh, i am going to perform ghusl uh, to purify myself from my impure state in order to be able to carry out acts of worship uh, that require a ghusl. This is an intention that you can make inshallah. Something along those lines you can make this make something similar as well. Once you have done this you will now take the water and pour it over your entire body. I would suggest that you start from your head and take and, and work your way down. So you will start from your head and only work on your face and your hair. So for a female, she should part her hair, make sure all of her hair is washed, put some shampoo in, wash it all off, wash your face, everything. And then you must divide your body into two halves. From your neck down, divide your body into two halves, the right side and the left side. Then you will begin with the right side and you will wash everything from the sh right shoulder all the way down to the right foot. Then you will start with the left shoulder all the way down to the left foot. This way you will only be concentrating on one side of the body, making sure that every single part of that body, uh, of that side, is completely washed and uh, wet and cleaned. Once you have done that and you have washed both sides, then you must uh, perform your wudu. Once you have performed your wudu, whilst you're performing your wudu, when you are rinsing your mouth and your nose, you will do it to the deepest part of your mouth and the deepest part of your nose, uh, as much as possible without hurting yourself of course um, if you are not fasting 
once you have completed that if water gathers at your feet then you must wait until the end to be able to let the water drain and then wash your feet and that is your ghusl completed so alhamdulillah we have completed the um, method of performing ghusl in the correct manner inshallah if there is something which you are still unsure about or you still have your answer your question has not been answered then please do message me either um, uh, down below in the comment section or you can email me at roomytalks@outlook.com. Or what you could do alternatively is you can message me on my social media platforms on Facebook, Instagram and Snapchat at Romana23 and inshallah I will get back to you. I hope you all benefited from this video inshallah. If you did, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up inshallah and subscribe down below. Jazakumullah khair for all the love, all the support, everything that you guys show. Alhamdulillah, you know, it, it, it doesn't go unnoticed, uh, mashallah. Jazakumullah khair. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept these small minor efforts uh, from us. And if there are any suggestions that you would like to put forth for me to make videos on, please do, do, do. Uh, I will be more than happy to receive them. Uh, so I have some video ideas because I really don't have any ideas. Uh, and inshallah, if you leave them down below, I will try my best to uh, to make those videos. Jazakumullah khair to everyone who tuned in today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. Please do keep me in your du'as. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fil akhirati hasanatan wa qina adhab annan. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta as-samir alim. Wa tuba alayna innaka anta tawwab al-rahim bi rahmatika ya arham al-rahimin. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim.